Alright, the introduction video for a new channel it's devoted to economics only. Um, and basically, what will be defended here, supported, is uh, something I call incentive economics. But, you know, call it whatever you want. Um, it's not communism, it's not socialism, and it's not free market, crazy ass, lunatic capitalism. <laughs> um, something in between, something regulated, something responsible. Um, something that puts the incentive carrots in all the right places. It's that kind of idea. Uh, all right, uh, so quickly, briefly, um, what's always plagued mankind is the consolidation of wealth. It is the sin, okay? It's really, that's where it all goes wrong. Um, that's what caused the last uh, Great Depression. That's what's going to cause this one. Um, it's just always been a bad idea to put control in the hands, you know, the surplus created by productive workers in the hands of people who didn't do anything to earn it, you know, kings, queens, monarchs, noblemen, elitists, um, whatever you want to call these people. And in this current society, I call them the legacy welters, um, you know, the people who do no work but um, are paid to do no work, um, being paid based on what um, family they're born to, which is just idiotic economic policy. Um, this principle is simple. Look, nepotism is great. Personal policy, yes, love your children all you want. It doesn't work as social policy. It's just completely corrosive and destructive. It's a huge cheat in the game of life. Um, economics, really, people should have an incentive to work harder, to be more productive. And that's where the incentives should be, is put in front of people that actually work. Nobody should be paid to do nothing. That's just insane crazy stupid foolish foolish with a big f foolish um so anyway uh look you either get rid of inheritance the capacity to extend ownership of the capital and the society and industry and uh the rest of it you either destroy that legacy by preventing it from being inherited into the future um or else you limit wealth or you can do both um but either way there's got to be some capacity for the system to rebirth itself, to start anew, to clean itself of the consolidation that is just so destructive. Um, the whole idea of capitalism in the sense of making money on money is so corrosive and destructive. As soon as you make it possible to make money on money, to make money without doing productive work, just through ownership and manipulation of that ownership, um, you have to extract that money from something. You can't just pick the money off a tree. It has to come from something. And what it comes from is the value of work. You have to exploit a worker somewhere to extract that profit. If you're going to make money on surplus, on money, uh, that's the only way it can happen. And uh, I like using the analogy of a, a wheat silo. If you have a silo full of wheat, it's a valuable surplus and it should retain its value into the future but you don't have any expectation that the wheat kernels will multiply in the silo and you'll end up with twice as much wheat in three years that notion that idea is ludicrous and as soon as we allow capital or surplus to do that we not only devalue that wheat but we devalue the workers who produce that wheat and that's the corruption and corrosion of the system it just breaks the system down uh, the rich don't create jobs, demand creates jobs, and uh, people will, supply will be provided based on the strength and, and veracity of that demand. And there's no need for rich people or capitalists to, you know, be there to steal their percentages. Um, I think reasonable estimates are that uh, the top 5%, the most, the top wealthiest 5% of the people probably own two-thirds of the value of our economy. They produce, you know, one one hundredth of the work, the real productive innovation, anything you want to call it, and yet they extract two thirds of the value. So if you're an average working person, if you're any working person, if you do any productive work whatsoever, you could receive three times the value of that work. Real compensation would probably be at least twice as much. Um, uh, probably more like three times. So your house could be three times bigger, you could have three cars, you know, go right down the list. Everything would be multiplied by three. You could work three times less hours. Uh, you know, instead of a 40 or 60 hour, 70 hour week, 
yeah you could cut that down to 20 and live the same lifestyle if you weren't feeding big giant parasites the rich and uh, <clears throat> so anyway the, the, the simple outline would be look okay inheritance is the easy one to fix you just end all inheritance or put a limit on it of two million dollars or some other rational number and just say that's it anything over that is taxed at 100 percent there's just no capacity to move wealth from through to the generations uh, you can give them a cheat you can give them a head start but no over the finish line victory dance nonsense okay you have to earn that you have to build that that uh, head start into something you're going to still be forced to at least run half the race if, you, if you're not going to be forced to run the whole race you should be at least obligated to run half the race and that seems more than a reasonable limitation and so if you can't do that the other way to do it is to stop the wealth from growing in the first place um, businesses are not um, themselves anything unique okay it's it's just a run business so if every business was public um, the money to start the business was publicly provided as seed money and then paid back um, at a fair interest rate to the government um, the business itself can generate enough excrete enough productivity from its workers to pay for itself and then belong to the workers itself and every business could be structured where the top um, the person running the business say could get paid two hundred fifty thousand dollars as a maximum salary and the lowest paid employee for eight hours a day work would get paid thirty five thousand and within that structure people could compete um, for their value um, I, I don't see anything inhuman or draconian or horrible about such a system you could still prove your worth and you could still get fairly and very well compensated for it um, if you're making two hundred fifty thousand dollars you're going to be a rich person you're going to live a nice lifestyle compared to everybody else remember that that two hundred fifty thousand dollars is going to be worth seven hundred thousand dollars in a real economy so it's going to be a lot of money to live on um, so it's not going to be any deprived lifestyle because everybody's the value of work is going to increase by doing to moving to such a system um, productive work so anyway the business would basically be owned by the people working in them they would get a percentage but there would be no the the objective would be to basically run the business as a non-profit it would um, the only the only thing extracted from the employees would be the money to um, maintain the business's um, productivity to maintain it as a good working environment producing a good product at a fair price and all that jazz um, and people get paid for their work fairly um, so anyway, so if the, if there's those two elements. Either either you control the wealth or you control the inheritance of the wealth. And on the inheritance side, yeah, it would be taxed at 100%. It would have to go back to the government or it could only go, like say if you had $40 billion, I, it would be ludicrous in my opinion to create some sort of racket where people can create private foundations that have all kinds of loopy ambitions uh, that might just end up squandering the money. So there'd have to be approved ways to funnel that money give them some choice maybe in how the government will um, secure re tax the surplus essentially um, because remember that's all a tax is too a tax is basically the government saying we're going to take control of some surplus some surplus of the they're going to call it that um, from, uh, that they extract from the workers and from the economy uh, to, to invest in things that are productive for the civilization and uh, we the people can should have the right to manage such a system um, really the, the only thing that has to be controlled is the battle between consumers and workers um, so as long as their power is semi equally divided um, you know the excesses can be prevented and uh, anyway in a rational system you won't need unions you won't need all the rest of this crud because people will have it'll be fair for everyone everybody will play by the same rules uh, that's another fault in this system is you know to do it all piecemeal to say well if you have if you have vital enough a service you're providing we'll give you extortion power but if you don't have a if you're not providing a vital service we'll <laughs> we'll give you no power and give you the liability of perhaps being so you know where your life is even used up where you compromise your health and your welfare just to retain a job um, that kind of inequity, there's no excuse for it. Um, work has to be valued. 
every little bit of it. Um, it doesn't matter how dirty the job is. It doesn't matter how many people are dumb enough or too stupid to acquire better work or do better work. It's still work, and it's got this. People should value it. Um, so anyway, I think that's enough for a beginning. So anyway, that's going to be the focus of this channel. It's it really it isn't it isn't. I'm not suggesting communism. I'm not suggesting even socialism. I'm just suggesting a structured system where there's a, a, a cap on the excesses of, at the top and the, the excesses at the bottom and, and a framework for um, some sort of free market to work within that can't get out of control. Um, right now, um, statistically, uh, the wealth figures, the consolidation figures, the amount of money held by the richest one or two or three percent the numbers are as bad as they were in 1929, um, and that's why this economy is crashing.